in the family. Won't be seen tonight, so we can bring you a very special episode of The Gen X Files. Welcome to The Gen X Files. I'm Jim. I'm Adam. And today it's another For, for the, the Stepdads. Stepdads. Oh, you chubby old stepdads are sitting here. <laughs> And just Speak to... for yourself. I'm <laughs> sleek and beautiful. That's true. Adam is an Adonis. God, no. Uh, <laughs> he's kind of like a better looking Brad Pitt. Uh, now that I turned 46, I've let myself go. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> wait till you get to be my age, buddy. <laughs> Um, you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. This morning I realized after I, I sat down, I, I woke up, I got up, and I sat back down for 30 seconds, and I got up, and I literally sounded like I just poured milk on Rice Krispies. Oh, wow. My whole body was just like... Pop, 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 yeah. I was like, okay, wow, this is getting old. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it was your birthday month. Yeah, yeah. You're pushing 50. Yeah. I'm pushing 80. Pushing 50. <laughs> I still got two years before I'm pushing 50. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's uh, it's fun getting older. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's one way of saying it. <laughs> hey, look. I was talking. Who was I talking? I was talking to somebody about getting older. And the benefits are you don't really care as much oh, about yeah. stuff. Yeah. And yeah. About what people think. And, and you know, uh, that's a nice part of it. <laughs> but then the rest of it is just uh, – it's just a sad – it's just – you get to a point – where things aren't going to get any better physically, yeah, and yeah. you're just watching yourself decompose inside yeah, and out. Yeah. And it's uh... – Although I, although I will say, uh, growing up, my, my best friend in elementary school, his parents, when they were in their late 40s, they both lost a ton of weight and got super fit. And I, I was like, okay, like I'll do that in 40 years. <laughs> what they, would they look like in their 50s? Uh no they stayed thin for quite a while actually you can't I mean look it's not but they they did like a radical like life change I mean it was like they changed I mean and they stuck with it that's crazy most people can't do that later yeah oh no 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 no. I mean I think about that now and it's like there's no way (laughs) yeah there's no way well I mean I like my pizza too much exactly I I I still exercise not like I used to but now it's not about looking good yeah it's about just maintaining a, a level of strength to right. not be right. afraid of teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Having to fight them on your lawn. Yes. Yeah. You quit making fun of me, you bastards. Yeah. You'll be old too, Andy. You'll be old too. <laughs> you just wait. You yeah. just wait. Yes. Yeah. I haven't had to confront any teenagers, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, I started using public transportation. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's a whole other ball of wax. Yeah, there's a, a lot of really interesting people in Los Angeles, and uh, I think all of them either ride the bus or the trains. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's an enclosed space, so you're out of the elements. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they generally can get on. The longest train ride is, like, an hour, so, like, it's an easy way to sit down and just ride until you get to the next place. And then... <laughs> you know what's funny is I I don't know why, but I am a magnet. Oh yeah. For people. Yeah. Of all types. <laughs> I don't know if my face is just like a open 24 hours sign, come on in and get whatever help yeah. you need. But good lord, man. You look very trustworthy. I'm not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, uh so this has been a really fun month. The other buddies yeah, um, yeah. It's been really great. Uh, it was great to see Running Scared again. It was really – it just renewed my love for uh, – <laughs> I thought you were going to say Billy Crystal. For Billy Crystal. Billy well, Crystal. no. It actually, did, it actually did. What yeah, really yeah. Uh, <laughs> got me juiced again for Billy Crystal was that Jimmy Kimmel bit he did. Oh, God. That April Fool's bit. Yeah. Which so just good. was hilarious. So good. Um, <laughs> he's still – he's a good guy. I, You know, I, I have – we're hardest on the people we love, I suppose. Correct? Yeah, yeah. You know? And I had a, I, I've always in, enjoyed him. There was a, a a period of about twenty years where he just didn't appeal to me anymore. And yeah, that's fine. Well, it's because you you another like five years, you'll suddenly realize that you love baseball, and then he'll be your yeah. favorite comedian of all time. I will kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> 100 <laughs> percent. Um, but and and Gregory Hines, man, it just oh, makes me want to so watch good. everything that he yeah. was in. White Knights, man, I need to watch that again. And Wolfen, we got a cover. Wolfen, yeah. Um, I've never, I've actually never seen Wolfen. It's good. I mean, I don't. Honestly, I don't know if it's good. It's been a long time <laughs> since I've seen it, but it was a movie that 
my sister and I both really love. Yeah. And it just has, you know, it's got good friendship between oh, Albert yeah. Finney yeah. and, uh, and uh, Gregory, Gregory Hines. Hines. Um, and it's just kind of like this cool investigative piece about maybe werewolves, or maybe right. shapeshifters. Right. I think it's shapeshifters. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, it, the, the chemistry between those two guys made it so much fun. And then, oh, baby, I can't tell you how much fun I had watching Tango and Cash. Yeah, in. yeah. It was it was actually funny that mentioning the you don't know if Wolfen's good or not because Harley Davidson the Marlboro Man made me realize there is a nostalgia sheen <laughs> on yes. almost all of my memories. Tango and Cash was one of those that actually surpassed that. Yeah, because I remember it not being very good. Oh yeah, and and Tango and Cash, and then and then watching it again, it is so much fun. Well, I think. When you're younger, and especially if you're a filmmaker, an yeah. artiste, you know, it's like that kind of bubblegum uh, action pop, you know, it's kind of like, oh, it's just fluff or whatever. But as right. you get older and you just appreciate movies and, and, and you really like action flicks, yeah, it's just a great flick. And also, a lot of these movies, what's really funny is a lot of movies have gotten better with mm-hmm. age because subsequent movies are so much worse. Right. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, you seeing, know. Seeing how many movies borrowed from all these movies yes. it just makes them, yeah, and, yeah. And, and badly, you know? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not realizing the thing that actually made it good. Exactly. But Tango and Cash was so good. Oh, so much fun. And uh, it's one of the, the, the best times I've had watching a movie in a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, look, <sighs> Harley Davidson, The Marlboro Man, is not a good movie. <laughs> No. It's not. It's really not. It's it's, but it's not a bad movie. It's an interesting movie because right. I always like watching genre movies that kind of are the uh, the bridge of the decades. Yeah, like eighties yeah. to nineties. Yeah, and that's yeah, the bridge agreed. of eighties to nineties. Even though it's like early nineties, it was shot. Yeah, yeah it was like ninety one, but it was shot in ninety. Yeah, and, so it's yeah, shot on yeah. the cusp, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I like to see you know what the changes are, and changes weren't good. But <laughs> no. but it's no. <laughs> but it was look in in contrast with these other movies I think it really fits yeah. because it is a time capsule of the oh, yeah. futurism of the nineties that was the big thing in the nineties man right the big right. thing in the nineties was like the five year future gap jump right right it was always the near future yeah like what and and it How- was, did they think that we were, we were? I mean, granted, technology does grow very quickly. Yeah. But does it go that fast? No. There's no way that in five <laughs> years the tiny little Burbank Airport became an international airport with with, with uh, yeah uh, Concord's Concord. landing yeah, there. Yeah. No. Which which also, by the way, they would have I had didn't, to take over all of Burbank. I didn't realize until I was doing the putting together the social media for this uh, that. The still of where the bar is, yeah. and and uh, and the background. The background is literally just downtown LA. Yeah. So they're essentially implying that Burbank grew all the way <laughs> to downtown. Like, well, it, <laughs> I mean, come on. There's always geographical. I know. Uh, I know. It was just funny. I didn't realize because it was the tower that gets blown up in Independence Day that right? I was like, oh, that's actually downtown. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Look, there. Like we said on the show, listen to the show if you haven't. Uh, there's a lot of things to like. It's oh a, yeah, it's a yeah. great afternoon. Have a couple beers, movie. It oh, was yeah. it was definitely for me one of those. If you know if I'm popping channels on the old satellite and I see yeah. it popping on, I'll stick. Yeah, yeah. You know, at least for a while. It is. I mean, you know, our our audience uh, I think also has the nostalgia sheen <laughs> yes. because the, that episode's been doing very well. Nice. But uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's just funny because I. I don't hate the movie. Oh no! It just it just wasn't as good as I remember. That's no, all. no. And I think the last time I watched it was with a uh, friend of the show, T. Arthur Cottom, mm-hmm. award-winning mm-hmm. filmmaker, T. Arthur. Oh Cottom. yeah, yeah. He it's contractually uh, his, stated his that you have name. to. Yeah. Yes, he changed yeah. his name to. Yeah, uh, I'm just teasing him. He is an, a great. He filmmaker. is. The, he is. Yeah. Um, and a good guy. Uh, but I think the last time I watched it was with him, and both he and I are. Uh, you know, super fans of oh, yeah. Don Johnson. Right, right. So, you know, it just was fun because we both made fun. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you got two people yeah. that really like it. It's 
it's it's a lot of fun. Not that it wasn't fun watching with you, but yeah. But I'm no T. Arthur. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not award winning T. Arthur Cottom. Uh, no. I'm sorry, award winning filmmaker T. T. Arthur. Are any of us? But uh, <laughs> thankfully not. But, uh, <laughs> just kidding, T. Just kidding. Uh, like he listens. Yeah, I know. But uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, we had fun watching it. But it was also more of a critical eye, you know, because I think yeah, yeah, yeah. You're watching the stuff for the show sometimes, you know, it's it's sometimes it's like homework and sometimes right. it's pure pleasure. And yeah, and this was yeah. a little homeworky, I guess. It was, it was, and that, but that's part of the reason why Tango and Cash was so good because I was fully expecting to have to just slog through this movie, right. and and it 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 was like nope, just put that critical eye aside yes. and go for the ride. I think in retrospect, if we would have started with Harley, yeah. We probably would have enjoyed it more than, you know, throwing probably. it at the end because yeah. we wouldn't have had the other two to, to yeah, to, to compare it to. Them. That's true. That's true. But, do, it was, but it was a fun month. It was a fun month. Very fun. Yeah, and it was your birthday month. It was. You uh, you had a good birthday. You went camping. Yeah. I the best way to celebrate your day of birth is to go to the Valley of Death. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, you didn't die. No, I didn't die. Uh, thankfully, yeah. <laughs> I did see a lot more wildlife than I thought I was going to. But it was fun. It was good. I highly recommend going to Death Valley at least once in your life, and probably only once because you don't really need to go back again. <laughs> There's not a ton to see there. Um, it's not. I mean, it's interesting. It's really interesting. But you can definitely do it all in, like, in, a, in a day, a couple a of day days, and a half. Yeah. yeah, like you do one overnight, you're probably good. Don't go in the summer. Do, definitely don't. In fact, they tell you specifically: do not go outside between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. During the summer, because it doesn't get below 100 degrees, Ugh. even at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's disgusting. The, the coldest it is during the summer is at 4 a.m. Well, yeah. there you go. There's your sleep time. Yay. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it was fun. It was fun. Nice. Uh, I really enjoyed camping, so it, it was good to get out into nature. And uh, you got the uh, complete season. Of... I did. Uh, Jim gave me Quantum Leap, the complete uh, for the original show, right? Uh, not the new show that was unceremoniously canceled. Yeah, which is so disappointing. Uh, I have very mixed feelings about it because it wasn't a great show, but no. I really liked the show. I enjoyed it too. It 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 filled that hole of uh, it filled that hole. Of hopeful sci-fi goof. Yeah. yeah. You know? It yeah. knew exactly what it was. Yeah. It unapologetically did it. and it had some great actors in it. Oh, yeah. Like, I... Yeah. I mean, that was the thing I'm most sad for, was that I... It seemed like the creative team uh, with the actors and everybody just had a really great time. In fact, a guy that I, I worked with, um, uh, he was an editor for a show, uh, Justice, the show I worked on a long time ago, mm -hmm. which was on Fox, uh, where I met Victor Garber, actually. There you go. Uh, he was an editor for that show. He's now a t TV director. He directed, like, half the episodes of Oh, Quantum wow. Leap. And, like, seeing him post behind-the-scenes photos and stuff was really cool. It just seemed like everybody just had such a good time making the show. It And it, it you could feel it when you watched yeah, it. exactly. It had that, you know, there was didn't seem like there was a lot of misery. Yeah. You know, yeah. back in the... It wasn't moonlighting. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seemed like everybody got along. Yeah, uh, we do. Uh, we have one old man correction. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's on me. Which is uh, probably have a lot more of it because uh, we're so old. This is the only one we remember. Only one I remember. It's the most egregious. Yeah. So Daniel Baldwin isn't dead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Baldwin. Um, <laughs> I was positive he had died. I I you know, and as soon as you said it, I was like, yeah, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. That just sounds right. It, and it's so awful. I mean, poor Daniel Baldwin. That it's like, yeah, he's dead. You know? <laughs> so, nobody questioned it. It was just so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's in like fourteen movies coming out this year, so he's definitely not dead. No. Uh, oh my god. I this is so stupid. <laughs> but there's this friend of ours. He was the worst actor ever. He was in. Yeah, one of my play, one of my fifty hours with a puppet. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, man. Yes, it was yes, just yes. every choice was wrong. Right, He's right. just awful, awful, right. awful, 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 awful actor. I don't know. Maybe a good person. He, <laughs> he also shows up in these really weird like uh, gangster comedy film things. Really? It's really weird. weird. I don't know what the fuck is going on with this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but so after OJ died, this friend quotes of yeah, ours yeah. posted. And I thought it was a joke. He's like, OJ was innocent. His son did it. And this book proves it. And it was just like, and then every one of the comments, because I'm like, this has got to be a joke or whatever. <laughs> All the comments are like, 
you're you're an idiot. This is so stupid. How can you? And, he, and every response was like, you haven't read the book. You haven't read the book. So I got really curious because there's this book by this private detective that came out like 2001. And it, yeah. and, and now it's getting a little bit more right, right. You know, press because of the thing. And, and this is – he's a famous private detective, um, something is Deer. He, is he the he, – oh, okay. William Deer, I think his name is. Okay. And he he inserts himself into these high profile cases, and he's a very he was a very he wasn't successful the, the Kurt and Courtney guy, was he? I don't think so. No, because I think I, okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, he's now inserting himself into the Jean Benet. Oh, of course um, he is. But so I was curious because it, you know every time somebody would say, you know, uh, <laughs> comments were. This is ridiculous. You're an idiot, unfriend. Or, you know, <laughs> better to keep your mouth shut and be thought wow. of fool than open wow. it and prove yourself. And then all of his responses were like, fine, but read the book. And it was like, you're unfriended if this is true. You're an idiot. <laughs> read the book. Read the book. It's so, it's read the book. And uh, so I read this article in The Advocate uh, that, that was reprinted from when the book came mm-hmm. out. Because mm-hmm. like, this guy wrote a review and, and the the uh, publication, this LA publication doesn't exist anymore and it wasn't mm-hmm. archived. So he wrote an article and then reprinted that article from the okay. time. Right. And it, the stuff that this dude was doing was borderline criminal, man. He oh, yeah. was stalking Jason Simpson. Oh yeah. He would park in front of his house. He rented that house next to him to put a oh. operative in. He was going through his trash for oh, years, for years he was God. doing it. Just, you know, all he went into the hospital dressed as a doctor to try to get Jason Simpson's uh, medical records for his mental health, you know, his his mental issues. Uh, He chickened out, but somebody gave him the records. So all of this stuff is just fudged and. Weird. He totally ignores all the blood evidence. He totally. <laughs> so because, I, you know, I'm, I was like, look, maybe, you know. I 100% think OJ did it. I I do not believe any of this. But and I almost posted the article because there's like 81 comments on this thing. And they were all like, oh, wow. F you, dude. You're an idiot. So I almost posted this like, look, this is, you know. Right, right. Here's... And then I just, every time I think about yeah. doing that, I'm like, why do I want to get involved? This is, I barely yes, know this person. Yes. This is com- coming with age. Is like, I have why? wasted so much of my why? time. I mean, I'm glad I read the article because it yeah. was interesting. Yeah. But it's just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was just so weird. But I, 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 I'm not surprised with this uh, guy. Similar but different OJ story. A friend of mine was working at a uh, bookstore in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm-hmm. And OJ Simpson came in and all his... His, uh, you got any murder books? Well, no, this was <laughs> way before that, before he was thinking about murder. He he essentially was asking for book recommendations, and his, his like, he was managing the place, the friend of mine, and all his uh, clerks were, like, just agog, like, oh, my God, it's O.J. Simpson, blah, blah, blah. And he was just aghast because he was like, uh, and the guy, O.J. gets a book, he recommended a book, O.J. buys it, and then O.J. says to him, if this book is bad, I'm going to kill you. No, whenever I don't know what to do. No. <laughs> Whenever I don't know what to do, I buy a book. Oh, nice. Uh, Because it turns out that morning, his daughter, I think it was his daughter, drowned. Oh, my God. And he came into the store and bought the book. And the friend of mine was the only one that knew that happened. Everyone else there hadn't been paying attention to the news. And he literally came in a few hours after it happened and bought a book so he could sit down and read and figure out what the hell to do with his life. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's sad. It was crazy. The kid was like two, I think. Oh, my Um, God. That's awful. So they drowned in his pool. Yeah, it was bad. Jesus. Yeah. Well, so anyway, I, that was one of those. I was like, oh, I never knew that. I never knew. I didn't realize he had a kid that died. Neither I did I. Yeah. I yeah. neither did I. And I told but. the story. I, I used to know Jason, and I used to know, not know, but I would run into OJ, a yeah. few, you know, either during football season or track season. Yeah. Yeah. He would show up. And, that, you know, that was, look, we all loved OJ back then. And the fact that he showed up to his kids' high school stuff in San Diego, I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah, father of the year. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it just you know, not that it. It's just weird that I've known two murderers. Yeah, yeah. Him and Andrew Cunanan. Well, three technically. Oh my god! But nobody knows yet. Jim. Well, they do now, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, that's awful. No, that's awful. All right. So uh, uh, Dan anyway, Ball is not yeah, dead. Yeah, Dan Ball is not dead. Uh, he's uh, alive and well. And watch the movies. Uh, yeah, I do watch the movies. It's so much fun. In order, if you only have time for one, make a Tango and Cash. Yes. And then yes. Running Scared. And then you have some time. Yeah, do Harley. Dance. Harley, if you yeah. can find it. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of movies, though, uh, what movies have you been watching this past month? Well, we watched a few. We watched uh, Lisa Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, written yeah. by, uh, I was going to say written by, oh, it is Juno Temple. No, it's not Juno not Temple. Juno Temple. <laughs> what am I <laughs> thinking of? Diablo Cody. Diablo Cody. <laughs> Juno Temple is she a great actor. Juno, yes. Oh, God. I need to. <laughs> this is what happens Juno. when I don't have a Red Bull before the show. Yeah. Um, and it was directed by uh, Zoe Zelda. Zelda. I'm uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was uh, directed by Zelda Williams, who's Rob Williams' daughter. Yes, it was her directorial feature film directorial debut. Great. She did a great job. She, directing. I thought it was directed very yeah. well. Uh, I think uh, the movie is most like most of Diablo Cody's movies. The third act falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. I I really like Juno. I mean, I remember really liking Juno. Who knows if I would you know seeing it again. And yeah. I, Jennifer's body was fine. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Yeah, I, yeah, both of them. Same with both of them for me. I was kind of like, okay, um. it, but it kind of seems like her style is kind of not in vogue anymore. If that makes sense. Like, yeah, it like seems a little out of place. Talky yeah. talky. Yeah. you know that seems more aughts than the twenties. <laughs> But Catherine Newton, yeah, she was good. She was great. She was really Cole Sprouse, great. Cole Sprouse was really is great. Good. Carla Gugino was amazing. She always is. Oh my gosh, she's so good. Uh, uh, it's it, it was definitely worth a see. But I mean, it was you know we waited till it came out on streaming and yeah. and, and watched it. We didn't go see it in the theater or anything. Yeah, it was it was interesting. It wasn't great. I'm really curious to see what Zelda Williams can do with. And other material. Sure. Like, what, what else she can do. I'm curious to see where her career goes. Yeah, and I think she definitely has a career ahead of her. Yeah. Um, there was some really interesting art design and, yeah. like, production design and stuff. Like, it was some great really shots. Really. Yeah. Some, yeah. You know, she, very thought out. I, yeah, I think very talented young person. I don't know how old. They're probably in their 40s. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. But, yeah, I mean, it's on streaming. If, you know, if you like Diablo Cody and you like those types of movies, give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a modern day Frankenstein tale. Yeah, you know. I'd give about a seven. Maybe. Yeah, six I, and a half. Seven. I would say probably six and a half. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Like, it's worth a see. If there's nothing else on, it's worth a see. I yeah, think, for sure. Yeah, it's it. You know, it, it's a it's a different kind of fun take on the Frankenstein myth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was, many of those. A lot. Yeah, it's a there's, big thing uh, now. The the black girl and her monster. I think that's another one. That one looks really interesting. It's on Hulu. I think. I, I think I butchered the title. But it's about this. It's not called Black Girl and the Monster. I think it is. Actually. Oh wow! It's close to that. It's, okay. And and it's about this girl whose brother I think is murdered, and she brings mm-hmm. him back to life. Oh. And it's just this. You know, it looks very interesting. I really like the those t- reanimation yeah. movies. I like the Frankenstein myth. Yeah. I, I love the book. Um, <laughs> I, I wrote a whole play in that same vein. Yes, you did, yeah, and it was yeah. great. Um, but I like I, the 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 bringing back. Somebody from the dead. Mm. I'm always curious how they do it and the repercussions of it. And I thought the the whole Cole Sprouse uh, character was very fun and interesting yeah, yeah, because it was like, yeah. oh, I need to have a tongue. I need. You know, so she had right. to get parts for him right, right. to create the perfect to finish the perfect boyfriend. Right. You know. So there well, was, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was interesting. Yeah. It was good. I yeah. It was. I enjoyed it more than I did the uh, another movie that we watched. Yeah, uh, which was Wish. Yeah, I, I. There was just something missing with Wish, and I don't know. I don't know if it just I wasn't paying close enough attention, but mm. I felt like the world building just wasn't there. It wasn't. It felt as if it was a reverse engineered origin story for the stupid when you wish upon a star. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was. It was almost to me at the end. By the end, I realized it was. For the hundredth anniversary of Disney, yeah, and that it was just a giant Disney circle jerk. Sure, and and I and I I would rather see a Disney circle jerk in an actual movie rather than just a movie that's going, "Hey, look at us!" Yeah, I mean, Chris Pine was just boring, and he's usually great. Yeah, he was he was a cartoon character. He, he was, was he's kinda, very two dimensional, but he wasn't. He, he's played other voices before and done yeah. a better job. No, it, agreed. It just agreed. seemed like he's sl- kind of yeah, because the script slept through the script this. wasn't very good. No, and it was a thin plot, and it was and it and it tried to, 
hinge on the cuteness of the star and the yeah. cuteness of her companion. And it, it really felt like they were trying to do uh, a version. It was it was like it was a a B list version of like Encanto. Like yeah. Encanto did something very similar, but did it way better. It's a lot more complicated. Yeah, and I, and it just. It just felt like it was just trying to charge through the plot points as quickly as possible. Right, and, checking and I, the boxes. Yeah, and it just... To get to the, to to the get to conclusion the, the that conclusion, they had which is, preordained, you know? Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I didn't have any expectations going into it. I mean, it no. was just kind of like, okay, it is what it is. Well, I mean, I us- Disney's usually pretty quality stuff. Yeah, I, you, know? you can always find something positive. Especially their that. animation. Yeah. You know, their Pixar, or even their own stuff is usually really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, so. yeah, I mean, Pixar for sure. But Pixar is is generally better written. Although although Disney Disney stuff is always well written. So I, it yeah, was like just surprising. Utopia is that yeah. Disney? Uh, no. no, 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 no. That, that was, was DreamWorks. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like in like in Tangled or whatever, the the last kind of this similar movie that D- Disney itself did, not right. Pixar, was fantastic. It was yeah. done so well. Yeah. And I and it just yeah, I was I was just disappointed. It was I, lazy. Yeah, it felt lazy. It was yeah. a lazy movie. I, look, if you have kids, you're going to have to watch it. But if you don't have kids, skip. Yeah, skip, definitely. Yeah. If you have kids, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's entertaining enough that it's like, okay, but you're going to be sitting back grumbling on the couch while your kids are all freaking out about the movie. It is a hundred times better than the next movie, though. Um, no. A hundred thousand times. I mean, I'll never know because I'm never, ever, ever watching. I watched this so you don't have to. That I jumped on this grenade. I martyred myself for two plus hours. <laughs> the stupidest thing you've ever done. <laughs> Technically five hours because you watched the first part too. Right. Uh, Rebel so, Rebel Moon. Part two. Part two. Scar Giver. Electric Poopaloo. Yeah. Um, Scar Giver. What a stupid title, by the way, too. I don't even know who the Scar Giver was. <sighs> Look. <laughs> We have dunked on, uh, I was going to say Dan Schneider. We should no. dunk on him, too. But uh, Zach Schneider, Zach Schneider um, a lot. Yeah. If, if, you've yeah. list, if you're a fan of the show, you know that we're not Snyderverse people. You know. No. We give no. him props for Watchmen, but you know that's not. And Dawn of the Dawn Dead. Dawn of the Dead, which is probably my favorite zombie movie. Yeah, which he didn't. Modern day zombie He movie. didn't write. I mean, that's the, that's the key here is that yes. he didn't write. He's, he's a horrible writer. And uh, and. Again, without the slow ammo, <laughs> we could have had this whole thing done in one movie. Yeah, yeah. In one one hour and a half movie, we yeah, could have been done yeah. with it and not had to sit through two movies <sighs> that sets up a third movie. Yeah, you know, it still well, didn't end. He's got to do the trilogy. Oh God, please no, please no. Which is actually going to be broken up into three parts. Oh my God, please! please it's going to be nine hours long. It's just I did not care about any of the characters. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. I usually get look, I I uh I get caught up and I get sad when people die. I get into it, you sure. know. Movies can make me cry um and laugh. No. <laughs> uh, but I, I was laughing at the death scenes in this movie. Oh, yeah. It was just yeah. stupid. I didn't give a crap about anybody. Nobody was developed enough for me to care about them. Right. I didn't even really understand what was going on. It was a uh, uh, a messy mishmash BS version of the Seventh Samurai, yeah. or Magnificent Seven, whichever one you want to rip off. Yeah, well, yeah. and Star Wars, and it just did not do anything. It, it, was, it was a, a vapid, big old pile of nothing burger. Oh my god! It was the most vapid, useless, just uh, <laughs> bank more, bankrupt. Just piece terrible. of crap I've seen terrible. in a long time. And That's there's a lot bad. of good actors in That's it. That's really too bad. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not saying this because of, you know, I'm not, like, I like, I want to like movies sure. at this point, you sure. know? If I'm going to spend my time watching a movie or a series, I, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to do this. I don't right. want to have to right. say it's crap. You know, right. we always right. try to say something nice. You, you know? want to try to enjoy it, or yes. at least enjoy something about yes. it. Yes, yeah. and in, I couldn't even enjoy it on an ironic level, or <laughs> a it's so bad it's good level, or you know, sit around and make fun of it level, because there's nothing there. No, there's no. nothing there to latch on to. Like, <laughs> like the, if it was on Mystery Science Theater, they'd just be like, "What? I, I don't know. How do I make fun of this? It's, yeah. it's just, it's like, it, it's like Trump. It's a parody of itself. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not even. You know, there's no way." To 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 
to, to make it anything other than just it's garbage. Vapid garbage. Yeah, it's just it's. I th- look. The first movie was so boring to me that I was actually working while watching it, and I was still so bored by it. I turned it off. I don't blame you. I don't <laughs> understand. I I don't. I don't get the Snyder worship. I just. It's I don't. Netflix, man. I don't know why. I don't know if like he somehow made them a ton of money or. I don't know. I don't know. Are they they're gambling all on him? I mean, it's not like the stuff he's doing is. I, I guess. Well, I guess they, people pay attention to him. I mean, regardless, well, they didn't on this one because you know everybody knew it was coming because we saw how bad the first one was, and I don't yeah. even think this one st- stayed in the top. Oh, really? You know, for it may be still in the top ten. I don't know, but I, their algorithm's weird. It was watched. But it was well, yeah, watched because yeah. curious idiots like me threw it on the first I couple I, of days. There were, I saw people talking about how much they liked the first movie. So, I mean. People have been kicked in the head. They have kicked, brain damage. Kicked by they horror. CRT. <laughs> yeah. um, is it CRT? Is that critical race theory? <laughs> That's thinking? critical race theory. What am theory. I thinking? What's the, uh, uh, the C-E-T? C-E-T, right? Isn't that it? Uh, I don't know. I was kicked in the head by a horse. Trauma? Uh, cranial something trauma? C-T-E. That's C-T. what it is. Cranial trauma ex- emergencies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was that. They, remember they did that uh, that movie with Will Smith. Yeah. With his yeah. horrible accent, where they just sort of kind of said that the NFL was uh, bad, but yeah. they didn't actually go full throated yeah. into it because no. they didn't want to upset no. the NFL. No. Oh, what an awful movie. Um, speaking of awful, yeah, movies. it was not a good movie. But yeah, please, dear God, stay away from for the Rebel sake Man. of your. Sanity for the sake of not wanting to throw a shoe through your TV screen. Stay away from yeah, Rebel Moon yeah. Part Poo. Yeah, Part Poo. I did uh, last night, uh, speaking of deaths in movies, uh, I did. Uh, Phoebe really wanted to watch Little Women, the 2019 Greta Gerwig nice. version. Yeah, that's a good Which one. I had never seen. Uh, the acting performing school that we work at did Little Women as a play yeah. a couple semesters ago. And, uh, and, I had never seen it, and I I loved Barbie. I love Greta Gerwig. I am horribly bereft in the movies that she's done, mm-hmm. so like I need to see more of them. I will say that I think this Little Women version is probably the best adaptation, and it's been adapted like ten times. Yeah. but probably the best adaptation. Great actors, done very very well. Um, it's a good story. I love the book. <clears throat> the, but the one thing that I really wish, and that kept, took me out of it a little bit, is that because it takes place over two different time periods. Right. You know, once during the the 1862 in the Civil War and then 1869, seven years later, I really wish that they would shoot this with actors that were the actual age and then let them age and then and then shoot the rest of it. Yeah, because it was really hard for me to believe that some of these actors were like 13 and 14 and 15. Yeah, like it just wasn't it's like the oldest was supposed to be Emma Watson, who's 16 at the time and. Her little sister, played by uh, Shirsha Ronan, is supposed to be 15. And I'm like, there's st- Emma Watson looks like she's 12. Yeah. I mean, like, it's not, it's just like, it doesn't make, it didn't. People but, aged weird back then. But I, I know, I know. And it, but it, regardless of that, it was, there was a point. Greta Gerwig has such a good handle on dialogue and directing mm-hmm. uh, people. Yeah. Because every time the four of them are together, it was. I turned to Phoebe and I was like, "It's like beautiful chaos because they're just talking over each other the whole time." Yeah. But you catch little snippets of conversation. It was done very well. I was yeah, very happy. That one's really good. The Winona Ryder one, I really enjoyed. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think little, you're right. It was a little too stiff for me. Yeah. But, but, but this yeah. one is definitely, uh, in my opinion, as well, the best adaptation. It captures the joy of being a child and like going into that age, you know, of like becoming a little little adult person and becoming a little woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the other thing that kind of threw me off on it was that the dad was played by Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, oh, hey, there you are. And the wife was... Uh, Laura Dern. Oh, I thought the wife was played by uh, David Cross. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was. It was David Cross playing Laura Dern. It was a uh, weird choice, but it He worked. did a great job, though. Yeah, he did. Great job. Oh, I love it. But anyway, it was, a, it was a good movie. I was just, it was one of those, I was like, okay, I like period pieces. I like, you know, I like Greta Gerwig, yeah. so I'm curious. I haven't seen Lady Bird yet. Lady Bird's that. really good. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple other Greta Gerwig movies I've not seen, but she's, she's quickly becoming one of my favorite directors. She's amazing. She's really uh, just so underrated and 
Yeah. And her style is so smooth. Yes. I think that's the way to yes. say it. It's just it's everything really flows really yeah. well together. And and you're right. She gets amazing performances out of her actors. Yeah. And she really knows how to set a scene. And I can't wait. Like, every time a new movie of hers comes out, I can't wait. Because it, it she just keeps getting better and yes. better and better. Yes. And uh, – and I, I'm not sure what she's doing next after Barbie. Uh, she's working on an adaptation of Hot Wheels. Nice. No. <laughs> yeah, she's doing Skipper. <laughs> Skip. My best friend Skipper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. But it's good. It's, it's definitely good. Uh, I, so I, our, our pick of movies is one from 2019, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> although Lisa Frankenstein is worth a see. But, uh, yeah, but it, I mean, the best one of the bunch is Little Women. That's for sure. But yeah. By far. By far. Uh, it's been it's just been a weird time. There's not been a lot of great movies coming out. Uh, no, kind of no. A, a, a barren sea of of new good movies. And I just don't remember. They they go in my eyes and out yeah. my butt, and I don't even know. That's how. Why I, are you eating them? I ate them with, with your my eyes. eyes. I don't know. I'm an <laughs> alien. Um, uh, the one movie we didn't watch that we meant to, which I think is out, it might be coming out this week on Shutter, is the. Uh, Late Night with the Devil. Yeah. Which is, is has been out in theaters, but I think it's coming to Shudder on the 28th. I yes. Believe. Yeah. So I'm very excited for that movie. One last movie. Um, I watched Drive Away Dolls, which was originally called Drive Away Dykes, which I think is a much better title. Yeah. Uh, but That's I get it. indicative of <laughs> that movie. Yeah. It's, it, uh, man, I wanted to love this movie yeah. so badly. Um, it was, it was, which Cohen brother directed it? Ethan Cohen. Oh, it was Ethan. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted to, to, to love this movie. It was directed by Ethan Cohen. I love the Cohen brothers. And the two leads, Margaret Qualley, who was in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, she was the, the hitchhiker. hitchhiker that he picks up, and yeah. then there's lots of shots of her feet. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that could be anybody. That's in a what I remember movie. about that scene. And it also has Ger- Geraldine. Geraldine Ferraro? Yes, <laughs> she's back from the dead, Adam. <laughs> Geraldine Viswanathan, I think. Viswathan, Wathan, Wathan. Was she the Was she the one from Miracle Workers? Yes. Oh yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's, I didn't realize that was her. Oh yeah, she's, she's great. so good. Oh my god. And the two of them were were really great together. Uh, Beanie Feldstein, who's always hilarious. She's she's Jonah Hill's sister. Um, I think she's funnier than him, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, no offense. <laughs> Uh, but it's, you know, it's it, Matt Damon, uh, uh, Joel Slotnick, C.J. Wilson. Like, there's so many good people in it. But just, I think, I, it, I think the Coens need each other. Because yeah, yeah. it felt incomplete. It was these weird, very kind of low-res animation things that kind of were part of the transitions. And it just didn't click. Weird. And Weird. I'm Let's curious for you to watch it. Yeah. It's not yeah. a bad movie. Right. It's just, it's, it was just something that from the, from the trailers I really liked. But what was funny was there was this one scene that they kept playing over and over again yeah. of them renting this car. The whole point is they need to take a drive away right. to, to go to Tallahassee. And the car that they get is you know not the right car and there's right, something right, in the trunk right. and bleep blap blap and the thing in the trunk is kind of funny but it just ends up being weird yeah, and yeah. uh and you know it, it just it was lacking and it just bummed me out and uh I'm curious for you to watch it and, okay. and then maybe you know next step down, yeah we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about it, it. Yeah. but uh it was something I was really looking forward to and then I did not hear good things about it yeah I unfortunately but but your your Looking for the positive, it was some of the most positive things I've heard about it. So yeah. I, I, I mean, curious. Peter Pascal was in it. It just had a really good cast. It just didn't go anywhere, you know? Weird. And yeah. it also seemed like... Did he did he write it, too? N- well, he co-wrote it, I believe. Um, he, yeah, he wrote it with uh, Trisha Cook, who I'm oh. not sure who that oh, is. Right. Uh, oh, you know what? I think she adapted uh, his... Hamlet or whatever the the Shakespeare thing he did shot during COVID. I think she co-wrote that with him. Okay, yeah, um, and this might have been based on a, a book or something. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you know, check it out if you want. But Macbeth? What well, I don't know. Anyway, the Shakespeare thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know. uh, um, that was written by Shakespeare. 
<laughs> um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Wait, he came back from the dead and adapted it? That's yeah. what the Coen brothers can do, but only both like, of them. Hello, one. Ethan. Ethan, I, I'm going to... Yeah, anyway. But it's a, it's a bummer because, you know, it's just even though they're not doing sometimes, stuff together... Look, sometimes stuff doesn't work. I mean, it's just, you know, you try as hard as you can. Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, I think they need both. Yeah. I, I mean, think, I honestly, I would probably agree with you on that. Unfortunately. And maybe, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But it's just... I'll give it, I'll give it a watch. It was a disappointment, unfortunately. I yeah. also watched, just quickly, uh, Academy Award winning Poor Things. Did it win an Academy Award? I think so. Didn't she win? Didn't, oh, maybe it was. Did Emma Stone win? Didn't Emma yeah. Stone get... Which, funny enough, Emma? is also... Emma, <laughs> Emma Stone? And Emma Stone uh, is... It's also a very Frankenstein movie. Definitely. That's yeah. why, yeah, I wanted to bring it up. It's another Frankenstein movie. I, I enjoyed it. I thought Emma Stone was great. I thought Willem Dafoe was great. Uh, I thought Mark Ruffalo yep, was guy. really good. Um, Margaret Qualley was in it only yeah. for a few seconds. That yeah. was very funny. And uh, Rami Youssef, who I really, oh yeah, I really yeah. like him. He's a stand-up comic. Mm-hmm. He's very funny. Uh, it was good. It just, it was like a very highbrow uh, sex movie from right. the 70s or 80s. You know, those movies yeah, where, you yeah, know, yeah, the girl yeah. goes and lives those in the brothel weird, yeah, and there's yeah. all this stuff. And it was very raw and there was, a, you know, it was, it was, it, it, and and that added to it and that made, you know, it was a very smart sex movie, right. which, and that's a really, you know, kind of insulting <laughs> way to talk about it. But honestly, it's, you know, it, the conceit is it's a Frankenstein movie and, uh, Willem Dafoe is this scientist who was just horribly abused by his father. His face is just all, it's great makeup because yeah, his yeah. face is like just chunks that seem to be, yeah. st- that were put together. Or he's, just, Weird. he's so malformed. And, uh, and he's trying to reanimate somebody. This woman, this pregnant woman kills herself, jumps off of this bridge, finds the body, baby's alive, woman's dead, takes the baby's brain, puts it in, in the mama's head, and mm. so it's basically a full-grown baby, and we're watching this person kind of grow. Right, become a person. Right, right. and then and also discover who they are, right. where they come from, right. discover. And, and the whole, all the sex stuff totally makes sense because, you know, it's all part of the awakening. And it's yeah. all part of, it's, 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 it's very, it's, it's got like a feminist bent to it, which is really cool about, you know, a, a woman discovering herself and her power and who she is and where she came from and all this stuff. And... Uh, it's just, it was a little uneven, man. It just seemed like there was these really weird comedic moments with Mark Ruffalo. Uh, and, uh, also Gerard Carmichael is in it. Who we love. But again, he just kind of had this part that could have been anybody. And it wasn't really that, I don't know. It was good movie. I enjoyed it. Emma Stone was amazing in it. Uh, you know, she, she deserves all the accolades. Yeah. She's always good. Yeah. So inevitably... I see these movies after they've been out for a while, and I hear all the critical acclaim yeah. and the Oscars yeah. and this and that, and my expectations, just like with, I guess, Driveaway Dolls, you know, my expectations get really high, and then right. it right. doesn't live. It wasn't, a, look, it was extremely interesting. It was beautifully shot. The whole steampunk aesthetic was yeah. cool. It yeah. had a cool feel to it. It just, it just was kind of uneven. It's just with all of this, all of his movies, uh, with all of um, Yorgos Lanthimos, Yorgos Lanthimos's films, uh, they're all kind of that way. You know, they're yeah, just a little yeah. bit quirky. They're very good, but there's there's just something about them that doesn't quite like 100 percent for me. Right, you know? right. But again, I, I, worth I definitely a look. I want to see it because I really like Emma Stone. So like, and Willem Dafoe. Yeah, just be wary that there's a lot of gore, there's a yeah. lot of sex and nudity, and I hate all those things. <laughs> and it's like, don't watch it with your parents, and don't watch it with your kids. Yeah. I think the only movie that, as you were saying, of these these movies where people are like, "Oh my god, it's amazing!" The only movie that held that held up to that in the last few years was Barbie. Yeah, the only one that I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I get it." I yeah, get it. yeah, that was really good. Because really Oppenheimer didn't for me. No. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, most of these, like all the, I just I'll see them. I'm gonna wait like five years <laughs> and see all these movies and be like, okay, yeah, yeah. just kind of get in your bunker. But I will say this, man. Willem Dafoe is one of the greatest actors oh, he's ever. He's so brilliant. He is so unbelievably watchable. He is just, he, he is a guy that continues to surpass himself and challenge himself I, I, like no other actor I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, because he's like what his sixties, seventies, late sixties, yeah. And I, I don't necessarily not. It's not respect, but I don't. Guys like Christian Bale or Matthew McConaughey who lose a hundred pounds or gain a hundred yeah, pounds yeah. and and you physically transform and method or whatever, they're good or whatever. But he doesn't need to do this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he throws some makeup on yeah, or whatever. Yeah. He's perfect all the time. Yeah. And I've never seen him give a bad performance. He was in Boondock Saints, baby. Oh, I and know. And he was still, he was the he was only so good brilliant. thing in oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was and, and unfortunately, he's the only good thing in a lot of movies. But he's always the good thing. Yeah. He's yeah. never the bad thing in a movie. I don't think I, I can think of one thing he's ever done that I, I haven't thought was oh, no, great. Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's incredible. His take on... Uh, his take on the Green Goblin for the newest Spider-Man movie. Oh my movie? God, so good! I mean, so he completely good. changed that character into yeah. something that was so was the was one of the most well-rounded dynamic villains we've ever yeah, yeah. I've ever seen in yeah. a movie. In, in a, in a, definitely not a superhero movie, but in yeah. a movie period. Like yeah, he was, yeah. So it's definitely worth seeing for him and, and Emma Stone too. I mean, yeah. it was a fearless performance from her. Nice and. A difficult performance that I th- she nailed, and I, I'm she deserved the Oscar. Yeah, yeah. she was great. So okay. it's definitely worth, worth a look. It. Okay, you know, be cautious if it's if you don't like gory or or a lot of sex and stuff. You it's know, getting it's off not for you. you. Yeah, but those are our movies. Yeah, movies. I'm sure, we missed a bunch. I'm sure. Uh, TV stuff. Uh, I finally finished watching Silo. Silo. Uh, it was really funny because I thought it was only eight episodes. And I watched the eighth episode, and I was like, that's the worst ending to a show I've ever seen. <laughs> and there were two more episodes. <laughs> nice. uh, but the end of it, the, man, I, they've already finished filming the second season oh, cool. in, in March of this year. Uh, they've already, I think they've already agreed, or they were at least con- considering doing renewing it for a third and fourth like wow. immediately. So that way, because the fourth would be the last. Right. That would be it. It would tell the whole story. Um, it was really good. Highly recommend it. Apple I, TV? Apple TV Plus, yeah. I, I, uh, the last, and it's done so well. Rebecca Ferguson is so good in it. She's an and, amazing actor. Yeah. And I, it's done so well in the way that it all comes back around. It's very well written. Cool. Uh, very excited in the last shot. It's one of those, those shows where, like, the last shot of it, it's a good season, and it theoretically could have ended, but the last shot opens it up to so many more other things. I love and, that. You know, kind of like I did finish also watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith, right. which the last 30 seconds of that show, part of me is like, I kind of hope they don't do more because nice. it's so messed up. Yeah. But it was good, you know, and it was done in that way. But um, but Silo is so good. I'm very excited about it. I haven't I haven't been like this into a show in a while. Nice. So, That's so. weird. I did start it when yeah. it first came out, and I think I just kind of forgot about it. But with your glowing review, I'll go back something, and watch it. Something about it just grabbed me and was like, I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of of the, hey, we're underground and some weird things happen, and now we're <laughs> yeah. a society. You know, I mean, yeah, like, I, that's that's kind of a thing. Like Snowpiercer, where yeah. it's like you have to live in a certain way. Yes, or, yes. You know, like you, you're forced into this, you know, some situation that you have don't to Don't go in. above ground. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. Highly recommend it. For people who don't know, what is the basic premise of Silo? Uh, the, well, the thing is, is that they've been underground. 10,000 people have lived in this, this underground silo for so long that they don't even know why they're down there anymore. Oh, wow. Um, it's been at least two to 300 years. And, and it's a self-sustaining society. Yeah. Like, they can survive. They, they always hover around 10,000 people. Um, but there was some, like rebellion that happened trying to overthrow and and they they've actually had st- so technically there was rebellion and it was two to three hundred years after that is when the show takes place oh, so wow. we don't even know how long it actually was before that yeah um they have no communication with the outside world uh if people choose to they can choose to leave the silo yeah and they have these viewing like places in their cafeterias oh, where yeah, they can yeah, okay. watch people go. It's like they call it cleaning, where they clean off the outside sensors and stuff, so that way they can see if they, if maybe we can go outside, you know. And inevitably, they walk ten feet and then they die. Die. Yeah, I do yeah. remember that part. I yeah. do. Um, yeah, that's because the first episode had two characters that I thought it was uh, Rashida Jones. Yeah, and and then the her husband in the show, whose name I don't remember. But, like, I thought she was going to be one of the main characters, and she literally dies in the first, like, <laughs> ten minutes. And I was like, oh, okay. 
Um, but there's a reason for that. And this is the beautiful part of it mm-hmm. is that all that setup is all explained in the first season. That's great. Not, not that what happened, like the bigger story, yeah. but like them going out and dying sure. and like, and like what the outside actually is and all that stuff is all explained in that first Good. season. Good. So. People try, this is what happened with Lost and Lost. And Lost. And so many you just try to keep that mystery going too long. Yeah. I, I really enjoy shows that kind of, Solve its own mystery and then have another mystery for the next. Yes, I, I I am a big fan of the the onion effect. You know, you mm-hmm. you start with something, you peel it away. Oh, there's more. You peel it away. Yeah. There's more. Lost to me was very much that right. way. I, there were some sheaths 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 of that onion that were really bad. But sure. like, you know, they didn't quite work as well. But like, this is this is something that. I know it's based on a three book series. I can say true story. A true story. <laughs> I know it's based on a three book series. I know that it has a it has an ending. Yeah. And and the fact that that Apple TV is willing to go, okay, we're going to put everything into this and and make this a complete story. Good. Like that to me is exciting. Yeah. It makes me want to promote it more and like get people to watch it because it's it was just done so well well cool silo great show highly recommend it um, apple tv plus i i am so tempted to read the books but i want to experience the show without knowing anything yeah that makes sense uh, in fact i started watching some like like you know like hey explaining the ending of the series like these youtube videos yeah. and the guy was like well i've read the books so i'm not going to spoil anything and i immediately turned it off i was like hey, you're gonna you're yeah. gonna say something that's not you know um because i don't know and i'm curious this world was so interesting and i'm really curious to see what in the hell is going on. Nice. Yeah, um, it sounds great. I'm going to definitely yeah. dive back in. Yeah, that. you should. You should. Uh, but when I came back from Death Valley, my birthday trip, uh, I binged Three Body Problem. Yeah. Which is almost the exact opposite <laughs> of Silo. <laughs> okay. um, I didn't dislike the show. Yeah. But if the show doesn't get picked up for more, and it's also based on a three-book series. And a three-body problem. and Yeah. If it doesn't get picked up for more, then it will probably be the worst se- season of TV I've ever seen. Yeah, I agree. I, I finished that as well. Uh, it just started getting interesting. Yeah. And not that it wasn't interesting. And oh, there's some definitely very interesting stuff in it. Look, the, the whole... The thing that I love the most about it, and this isn't really giving away anything, but... A slow motion alien invasion. And uh, yeah, the, the yeah. fact that there's an alien invasion coming in 400 years, I think, is a brilliant conceit. Yes. I don't think yes. we've seen that before. No, no. Knowing that they're coming. Yeah. Knowing that it's like, well, what are you going to do? Right. And uh, all of these people working so hard for something that they'll be dead by the time. Right. And their families will be dead. You know, it's like anybody that they've ever known will be dead, too. And yet they're still yeah. putting everything they can into I, I, I think that was part of it with the first season was that I was kind of hoping that it was like the end of the first season would end up being – and, and gra- I've not read the books, so yeah. I don't know. But the end of the first season would end up being like, oh, it's 100 years later and all the characters are different. But they're just not going to do that. Yeah, and the whole – the one thing that really creeped me out, and I'm going to just keep it vague because I don't want to spoil anything, but being a brain – Oh, yeah. In a box? Yeah, yeah. I just kept thinking, what if you're aware, man? Yeah. What yeah. if you have awareness and you're blind and you're deaf, and yeah. but you still have nerve endings in your brain, right? So yeah. you would be able to feel technically. Yeah. Uh, there you is a nervous feel, system. Feel real cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like, it's not like your imagination would start creating worlds for you to live in. Right. I think you would just be stuck in this black void, paralyzed. Yeah. For seven million years. Well, I have you read Johnny Got His Gun? I no. mean, that's that's essentially it's a, a, a Vietnam soldier who comes back that is blind, deaf, lost his arms and legs, but is still alive. Why? Can't talk. He's just there. Who is that? A true story? Yes. That's what the song one by Metallica is based on, which the chorus is literally, please kill me. <laughs> like, it's just over and over again. Well, like, I couldn't yeah. imagine. Like, yeah. that's torture. That is that not be awful. life. That is no I mean, quality of life no, there. No, what do you do? Yeah. I, I yeah. Mean, he, he, there's, he can't write anything down. He can't no. speak or can't anything. can't communicate at all. Like, what do you do? But you know he's alive, and he knows he's alive. That's I, horrifying. I, I, awful. You want to talk about hell? Ooh. Good Lord. Yeah, definitely. But Three Body Problem was interesting. I, I actually started watching it because I kept getting these YouTube videos thrown at me of, like, talking about not necessarily the show, but, but the, the three actual body. Yeah. Three Body Problem. Right. 
And and I was like, okay, well, I kind of know what it is, but I need to see right. so I don't get anything spoiled and blah, blah, blah. Essentially, the three-body problem is about a planet that has three stars. Yeah. Well, it, it's not – in science, it's yes. just anything that's three bodies together. Right, which you – if if you have an orbit, then, you know, one thing's going to catch the orbit. The other's going to catch the orbit. It'll pull you out. And – there is this whole aspect to it of trying to solve the three bodies. There's, there's no way to predict with the gravitational wells. I watched the whole thing with yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson. There's no way to predict with any of our computational technology yeah. of where that planet would end up being, being pulled by three different yeah. gravitational wells. And, and when and how. And, and, and like, yeah. So they, and, and, that, and that, I thought the whole game thing in the, in the show was great of them trying to figure out the problem. Yeah. And the fact that they eventually got to almost 10,000 civilizations and realized, hey, we just need to leave. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Um, but getting there was really interesting, and I, and yeah. I thought that stuff was interesting. Um, it really picked up speed in the last couple of episodes. Yeah. yeah. And it really focused itself, and uh, it started becoming interesting as, you know, it just kind of dragged it didn't need to be. There was a lot as long of setup. As it was. Yeah, a lot of setup, and and stuff happens. But it's it felt to me it felt very much like uh, the first season of of House of the Dragon, where it was like it just felt like a lot of setup. Well, when you told me that they took one character and made it into three characters, yeah. I think yeah. that to me was one of the biggest problems. Is I think there was too much going on. I think there were yeah. too many different stories. I, like you, enjoyed the group of friends who somehow are yeah. the center of this yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, Eliza Gonzalez, she was great. But yeah. it's like, what? You know, okay, so she, now what? You know, it's like she kind of served her purpose I, in the I script. I know, I know. And then they shoved her off to of South yeah. America. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 Jess Hong, very interesting character. You know, she. She's great, yeah. She, and the whole love triangle, you know, not love triangle, but, you know. Alex yeah, Sharp them, and his, he all. was great. Uh, I thought uh, the best part about it. Yes. The, yes. the two best parts about yes. it were Benedict Wong. Yes. Who you may know from Doctor Strange. Yeah. It's, it's Wong. It's Wong. <laughs> <laughs> A big stretch. Yeah. And uh, Liam Cunningham. Liam Cunningham is so good. He he was in Game of Thrones. Yeah. He was, he was in, the, the guy who had his fingers missing. Yeah. Uh, the sailor guy who had his fingers yeah, missing. Yeah. Who was like the, you know, the, the right hand. Yeah. Of the he king, was one, of, one of the kings. But he didn't have fingers, whatever. so right yeah. hand. Yeah. Um, he's so good, though. He's an actor that for the last 40 years has looked exactly the same. Yes. Yes. He, he, he's, look, he's somewhere between 40 and 70. You can never tell. <laughs> he's one of those people that I could literally just listen to his voice forever. Yes. Like, it, ugh. And Benedict Wong has this quality about him where he is just watchable. Like, just him being on screen yeah. Yeah. is interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, half the, the first five episodes, half of the time is him looking at stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting. Yes. Yeah. He's an incredible actor. And I, I and it, like I said, it gets interesting at the end when they kind of. Uh, pair him together with Giovanna Depo. Yeah, if yeah. I'm saying that correctly, um, another great actor. Uh, he was really his character was really interesting. Interesting yeah. too, and a lot of interesting things. And again, I think the second season. Hopefully, they'll make it. There's no word yet. I if assume they, it's going to get made. Well, I think now that there's so many characters that are gone, yeah, they can focus yeah. more. Um, I yeah. was a little bummed that the you know that the the experiment the you know the brain experiment went yeah haywire because yeah. i thought that that whole concept would have been so interesting for them i know to i agree get a to, to a, have somebody meet yes them. but but again though this is the thing i just there was no indication that they're not gonna have the show just be these characters right and it's like the only way that could have been interesting is that if this ship flies out to meet the aliens that are coming and then they put them back together, and then they have conversations. But that's still going to take like 200 years. Right. And so none of the Earthbound characters are going to be alive. Because it would have been so much – it would have been interesting, like especially if they do a time jump, and then maybe this character is now on their side. or Yeah. I mean, they did a lot of interesting things. You know, the way that they – I don't want to spoil anything, but the way that they dealt with Liam Cunningham's character at the end. Yeah. And yeah. what he went through, right. which is scary as F, man. Yeah, There's so many yeah. things – it's definitely worth a, a watch. It's, it definitely, definitely. I mean, I. But again, like I said, if if it 
just if they if Netflix goes, man, this didn't really do what we wanted, and there's no more, then it was such a waste of time. Yeah, it was. And I, I won't cry if it if it isn't renewed. No, I, I mean I hope that I, it is. I really do. Honestly, if that's the case, then I'm just going to read the books. Yeah, and and be done it, with it. Definitely, if it is canceled, then it does. It it did. Garner enough interest in me to want to know what happens and read right. the books. Right, right, exactly. Which they're exactly. going to be better anyway, so. I, that's true. That's true. But yeah, so a three-body problem, definitely worth a look. Yeah, definitely worth a see. I, there's some, oh my God, man. There is a particular sequence with a boat going through the Panama Canal that is one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen on screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Done so well. Yes. There are a few so scenes terrifying. In, this mo- in this TV show that are brilliant. So good. Yeah. So good. So yeah, definitely. Definitely check it out. Is it a? It's like a seven and a half, maybe another. I, I would. I mean, depending on the. Re- I I think if the rest of the season works and did tell a full story, that series. I would series. Yeah. The rest of the series goes, and that they they this season might end up being higher rated for yeah. me if if it blends in with everything in. else. Yeah. And but they, it really it's one of those like part of me is like I kind of wish that they just did because they talked Benioff and Weiss talked about it being like three or four seasons and like it's like okay well if Netflix that's the case you're giving so much money to Zack Snyder just let him make all of it and yeah. then just be done with it. Yes. And then like just parcel it out you well, know. Just don't make Rebel Moon 3 idiots. Yeah. I, I just allow them to tell the full story. I, I just yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah it was fun. Anyway. Um, so I watched, and this, I was super surprised, and, uh, and I loved it, was uh, the <laughs> Fallout show. <laughs> More underground bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Like, I'm a fan of the Fallout games. I started, I, I believe, at Fallout 3. I never played the PC stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the two original top downs. Yes. Uh, uh, I loved Fallout 3. Fallout New Vegas is one of my top yeah. uh, RPGs of all time. Um, Fallout Four is fine. I'm 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 actually kind of excited. Uh, like twenty years later, they're finally yeah, know, releasing the promised. Uh, I think in 2017 or 18, <laughs> uh, whenever that console came out, they promised that they were going to make a uh, Fallout Four upgrade for the PS5. It, it's coming out this week. If you're listening to yeah. this, uh, it's out. It, uh, it was out yesterday. I oh, believe. it came out yesterday. Oh, no, okay. I mean, so I'm a fan. Of the franchise. Yeah. Uh, it's such a unique franchise and such a unique take on uh, the post-apocalypse uh, genre. Right. Because it's got this very 50s feel to it. All the music yeah. is very yeah. like Frank Sinatra and swing. Very retro futuristic. A hundred percent. Which is awesome. Yes. And so the aesthetic is already something that I adore. And the show is its own thing. But... It doesn't forget the fans. And that's the key nice. to nice. An, a, an, yeah. an adaptation. Adaptation? Yeah. Adaptation. An adaptation. We've had three wonderful video game, video game adaptations in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with uh, The Last of Us, brilliant. So, so good. Uh, Twisted Metal, oh, so much fun. So much fun. And Fallout. And the reason why all three of these, we were talking about this, mm. the reason why all three of these shows are so great was because they understand the source material. They celebrate the source material right. without making it precious. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's the problem with video game adaptations of the past. And uh, I'm looking at you, Witcher. Uh, <laughs> if you don't respect the fans and if you don't love the source material and you, in the case of The Witcher, are actively against it right, and are semi hostile to your to its fans the way that they killed roach in the first season unceremoniously just you know shows how I little don't remember that at all exactly uh how they little roach was the witcher's horse yeah which is a huge part of part of the game yeah and yeah. you know and, and granted it's horse but it granted he names all of his horses roach doesn't matter but doesn't still matter. it was he to those of us who played the game we love Roach. Yeah. And, the, and what was... they did was garbage. And so, again, <laughs> and like, you know, this is going to be, they know this is the last season of Witcher coming out, and it doesn't have Henry Cavill. It's got Liam Hemsworth. I almost said Liam Cunningham. Liam Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, Liam, Liam Hemsworth. Liam Gallagher. Liam Gallagher. From, uh, Oasis. Uh, <laughs> you know, anyway, so, uh, yeah, let's get back to the good stuff. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Fallout 
is the, the, what's so great about it is they they don't they kind of follow the RPG formula mm-hmm. and the the Pip Boy. Uh, for those of you who aren't well versed in the Fallout universe, the Vault Dwellers. These are the people that. Before the nuclear holocaust, they went down to live in these vaults mm-hmm. that were supposed to be these, you know, societies that you could live in. It, to, to rebuild America right. at some point when the radiation goes away. Right. And if you know the lore of the games, it's a much more sinister yes. Uh, yes. plan that they have right. for the vaults. And so uh, we have this vault dweller played by Ella Purnell. Um so good. She's great. Didn't know she, she's either English or Australian or something. Oh. Uh, she was really good. I never watched the second season, but she was really good. Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets. She was in she, Yellow Jackets. She was in that. Yeah. She was great in Yellow Jackets. Really great actor. Uh, she's the vault dweller that, for circumstances that happen in the first episode, has to leave the vault. Yes. To basically find her father. She is great. Uh, and. Aaron Clifton Moten plays Maximum Max Maximus Maximus, who is a part uh, of the Brotherhood of Steel. Yes, he is a um, squire for the Brotherhood of Steel. A squire, yes. And yes. his whole adventure, and then you've got uh, <laughs> Michael Emerson from Lost, who oh, plays. I the, haven't I haven't gotten to his character yet. Oh, yeah, he is great. I mean, he's. I've only seen great. the first episode, so don't spoil anything. No, no, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just telling you who's in it. And uh, Kyle McLaughlin plays Ella's father, has such a great... uh, He's fantastic. He's amazing. There's also this actor, Moises Arias, who was in this movie. It was a small movie that came out a while ago called The Kings of Summer. Did you see this? No. Came out in 2013. Uh, It was this sleeper movie with Nick Offerman, uh, Alison Brie, Megan Mullally... Uh, and about these three friends, and uh, Moises Arias stole the show. Watching him, you know, play more adult role, playing a kid then. Yeah. But, but yeah. he is such a good actor, and his role in this is amazing. But is he the is he the little brother? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's okay. a little brother that lives in the vault. He's yeah. he plays Ella Purnell's uh, brother. Brother. Um, yeah. But you know. The, the guy who steals the whole goddamn show is Walton Goggins. Oh, and yeah, yeah. The more I see Walton Goggins, like Walton Goggins and Timothy Oliphant, yeah. those guys could just do everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the more I see Walton Goggins, and Walton Goggins, ever since I saw him on The Shield, yeah. I was captivated by this guy. Yeah. And from drama to comedy, from bad guys to good guys to in between. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Vice Principals. Oh, geez. He was so good in that. Yeah, and the Righteous Gemstones, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, such a good actor. In everything he does, the guy is a, an absolute genius and just seems like the most down-to-earth, yeah, nicest he's, guy. He seemed, yeah. With the craziest father. Oh, my God, man. He talks about his daddy. Yeah. I got to talk about my daddy. Uh, his dad is this character just covered in turquoise jewelry, cowboy hat. He looks, you know, and he, according to Walt Goggins, his dad thinks he's a celebrity. And his dad, (laughs) his daddy, whenever he comes around, my daddy, whenever he comes around, he's got this, he dresses to the nines, and everybody's always paying attention to him. I love Walt Goggins. And his take on the ghoul is, yeah, it's, you know, it's half uh, Clint Eastwood, it's half real and given. It's just he. Uh, it's a cowboy ghoul, and the truth is, like his character, without spoiling anything, is just so integral to every single aspect right. of the right. lore from the very beginnings of uh, Vault Tech being put together to where we are now. Mm-hmm. He trans. He, he he transcends the entire history of the the show. And they answer some questions about, like, the pit boy. You know the guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah, boy. yeah. Uh, it's great. It's great. If you're a fan of Fallout, even if you're not a fan of Fallout, if you're a fan of sci-fi or post-apocalyptic stuff, it's just a great mixture of action and comedy and drama. And it just it captures the spirit just like Twisted Metal and Last of Us. It yeah. knows its source material, and it gleans the best from it and leaves out the worst. 
and I can't wait for the second season. It was yeah. it was one of those that I, I binged in like three days. This is another one that that Amazon is is uh, like, yeah, we were doing the second season to the point where they they moved it back to California. They were shooting in New York, yeah, and they they moved it back to California, and so it's it's there's definitely a second season coming. Well, yeah, I mean, people are are playing Fallout Four and Fallout New Vegas and oh, Fallout yeah, seventy six. Crazy Fallout seventy six has got its like record numbers now because of the show. It's, it's gotten a lot better. It's, yeah, and the show is, yeah, the, the game's got a lot better, yeah. Yeah, but definitely check it out. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. I just, I, I, I had so much fun watching this show, and I, again, talent crush, overload. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, oh, Walton Goggins. My daddy, <laughs> my daddy. Um, yeah, so definitely watch definitely. that. Yeah, I'm excited to finish it. Uh, Phoebe and I are watching it, so we're, we're I was... <laughs> we watch things a little slower yeah. than, than I I'm just watching stuff by myself. Um, um, but but I'm excited to finish it. And she really liked the first episodes. So yeah. I'm and it, it, look, it, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like watching things where animals get hurt, just know that there's an animal part that it seems like it's really bad, but it's not. So you can go through with it. Yeah. You'll be yeah. okay. Yeah. The dog yeah. is fine. Yeah, I, I said that. I, I told her that. I told because her. it's very scary at one point, and yeah. I'm like, "What the f?" But yeah. it's just they know how to do it. It's it's it. There's side quests. Yeah. There's the yeah. people meeting up. It's very much a really great love letter to RPGs and nice. to Fallout itself. Nice. I also watched. Uh, uh, oh my God, Conan O'Brien must go. Yeah, that show is pure joy. I laughed so hard. I laughed out loud. My biggest complaint of the show is that it's only four episodes. Yeah. yeah. It is so amazing. This guy, I love Conan O'Brien. I think he is uh, right behind Johnny Carson and David Letterman as the best of the late night talk show hosts. Um, He's just so goofy and funny and smart. And the conceit of the show is brilliant. He has this uh, podcast. I don't know if you guys know what those are. It's called the podcast uh, where people talk. Um, nobody has them. They're very rare. Uh, but he has this podcast called Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. And on some of the episodes, he'll talk to a fan. Conan O'Brien Needs a Fan is the segment that they do. And it's right. like a, you know. And so he'll talk to people all over the world and they'll say, you know, they'll, you'll joke around with them or whatever. And then, you know, they're always like, well, if you're ever in Spain, you're ever in Nicaragua. And uh, and so this show is basically, he shows up to these fans like, hey! Yeah. And they're like, wah! And it's the greatest travel show I've ever seen because he does the coup. I, I just, I couldn't imagine doing some of the things he does, which right. are absolutely hilarious, but just take a lot of guts. Yeah. And the guy's 60, and he's doing Muay Thai in 100-degree weather, yeah. you know, for like three hours. I, I watched some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. And it's just amazing the lengths this guy will go to to get a laugh. But it's not desperate. I don't know how to explain him. I, he is the most desperate for a laugh human being ever. Right. But he makes that so entertaining. Yeah. His desperation is fake, of course. Yeah. But it's also partially real. But it's real. Yeah. But he exaggerates it. He exaggerates it to an effect that is just so great. And I just could not stop watching this show. I had a smile on my face the entire time. If you want something that's just going to bring you joy, without any sort of politics or nonsense or anything controversial or anything that's going to put a scowl on your face watch this show it's the antidote to the world mm-hmm. right now you know take yourself give yourself i wish i would have spread it out more because right only four right. episodes but he has other travel shows he's done oh yeah yeah no i've mm-hmm. seen those too but but there's something about this one that is just so well put together and it's just so ridiculously funny and he's just amazing at interacting with people right and he's jack benny man he is the jack yeah. benny of our time that's the only way i can say it but better than jack benny well, well it's definitely on my list uh, i do watch a lot of travel shows yeah uh, we, in fact the reason i haven't watched it yet is because we we're finishing watching the reluctant traveler with oh, nice. Eugene levy uh which is ironic because he's going through europe this time only seven episodes but everywhere he goes now in the background is just people cameras 
like phones, like just Aww. constantly on him. I'm just that's like, a uh, shame. That kind of takes yeah. you out of yeah. Kind of takes you out of it. But uh, but I'm excited to watch it because uh, I I love travel shows, so I, I'm excited to see uh, to see this and see how he handles. It. I've loved his uh, Conan's others yeah. travel shows. I mean, I can't recommend it enough. I can't. He's recommend such it a enough. weird goofball. Oh my god, he is just pure entertainment. Yeah, you know the guy is. Smart. I just love smart dumb comedy. Yeah, and he. There's nobody that does smart dumb comedy better than him. Uh, if you have a chance, watch the Hot Ones, the season finale. <laughs> yeah. uh, Conan O'Brien is not just the weirdest goofball ever. He, I don't know how he must have like a jaw of steel because not only did he go through all of the hot wings, yeah, but he would add extra. Hot wait, like sauce. Oh my god! And then he would sometimes just drink the sauce, and there was a great moment where suddenly he's just like, "I've made a terrible choice." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "My insides have turned to acid," but he never showed it in his face. Like, man, he was he was. Oh. The guy's brilliant, brilliant. It made him a little more crazy, but it's a great. It's very fun. It's he, very fun. He's just so funny. I love his podcast. Yeah, I, I, he's such a great interviewer, and he has an, a a really interesting story. You know, going from Harvard to The Simpsons right. to Saturday Night Live to being, you know. I remember being in a bar, I think it was in Belize, when the announcement of him taking over for Letterman. And we were oh, all yeah. just yeah. riveted about who was going to take over for Letterman. Right. And I, and, and I turned to Larry, Laser Tag Larry. We went, he and I went backpacking through Europe for like six Europe. We went backpacking through Central America for about six weeks. Oh, wow. And, uh, and he and I are sitting in this bar, and they're like, hey, it's going to be Conan O'Brien. And both of us are like, who? <laughs> who the F is that? What is the goofy looking dude? Yeah. And then I found out he wrote for The Simpsons, and I'm like, oh, I'm in. I'm yeah. 100%. Yeah. In. He wrote The Monorail? Oh, I'm in. I yeah. am. Yeah. And it, it, such an uphill battle for him. Oh, yeah. Nobody everything. thought he could do everything. It. Always, it, it's so much fun to hear him talk about the beginnings of the show mm-hmm. and just how horif- horrifying it was. You know, every day people were either commenting on his looks or commenting on his nervousness or this or that. Right, and it's just right. for the first <laughs> three or four months of his show, it's just this barrage of negativity, it, 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 and he pushed through it and yeah. survived yeah. for twenty something years. Yeah, he t- he has a he had a great story on the Hot Ones episode talking about how early on he he was like, yeah, they the animal guy came on and he had this yak and they were just like, get on it, and he's like, okay, and he gets on it and it just bucked him off like he broke his shoulder, oh, Jesus. like and he was like, this thing's just cram- you know, like trampling around. They didn't know what to do. He was like, I would never do that now. Yeah, <laughs> but at the time it was like, yeah, you know, I have to. Well, when like, you're young, you do dumb yeah, stuff. You yeah. don't think about your safety. You don't think about no. You know, wow, no. I'll block it off. Yeah. I can get hurt. There's cameras on me. I gotta do exactly. it. I gotta do it. I, I gotta have do it. To yeah. Go for the laugh. Yeah. And then as you get older, you're like, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll do it within the next week. I'm sure I'll uh, probably be doing I it. loved it. Uh, last show. Uh, we both watched, just came out on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Baby Reindeer. Baby Reindeer. Uh, about, essentially about Richard Gadd. Uh, he's, he's a playwright. He's done a bunch of one man shows at the Fringe Festival in yeah. Edinburgh. He's won a bunch of awards. Uh, he's written for a bunch of stuff. He's an actor. But apparently, for a couple of years in the middle of the 2010s, he was stalked by an older woman. Yes. Oh, and a horrible stand up comic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the part of it is I, when I realized that it was actually him playing the character, yeah. I was like, dude's got balls to, to show how bad his stand up was. was his stuff. I'm sure it was. I wouldn't be surprised. Although it's a character he's playing. So it's not necessarily him. Quote unquote him. It is such an unsettling show. I, I, yeah, I do. Okay. I started watching it. I got the first episode. I'm like, oh, okay. Creeps. Second episode. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just take a break. Yeah, I binged the whole thing. Yeah, and, I did, and yeah, I, and I, the same thing. I I stayed up way too late last night. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, I have to finish it. I was two episodes out, and I yeah. get later and later and later. And I'm like, oh, but I might fall asleep. And I'm like, but you're not gonna fall asleep. But I had to finish it. I right. had to know what was gonna happen. One of the most unsettling things about it for me was were the text messages or the emails. The emails. The way she spelled stuff. iPhone. <laughs> yes. iPhone. And, <laughs> and, sent from and, my iPhone. And that like that the sent from my iPhone thing yeah. just was kind of a barometer on how unsettled she yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. It was and, brilliant. And and it was I've never seen messages that creeped me out more oh, I know. than the way she wrote and the <sighs> spelling mistakes. 
and the great. It's just hundreds of emails every day. It, hundreds. It reminded me a lot of a Stephen King. Yeah. Yeah. Story, yeah. especially like the way that the the, the <laughs> messages were 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 presented, and you know there is a bit of a. a a misery. Oh yeah, aspect definitely. To this. The Annie Annie Wilkins. But to me, this was the most interesting stalker story I have ever watched. Yeah. Because of his his fearless way of portraying himself, his failings. Right. He, he's not a good guy. No. No. And he, he's and, not a and, bad guy. And, and a lot of yeah, it, it's interesting how it delves so deep into how he's kind of letting it happen because of certain things. But the way it unfolds, yeah, because you see stuff where you're like, this guy's a dick, or this whatever, yeah. yeah. But then you go back and you see what happened to him, right, right, and the reason why he acts that way, right, and the stuff that he went through, and then even going through that, the choices he makes, it right. is, it's a fearless. Yeah, it, it's thing. It's, it, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's one of the most uh, fearless portrayals, uh, autobiographical portrayals, because he says right at the beginning, yeah. "This is a true yeah. story." Yeah, but the fact that that he presents himself in such an unflattering and raw manner, right, right, was it, it was brilliant. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And it, it 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 started life as a one man show, um, and it is. They're only half. It's seven episodes. They're only half hour each ish. Yeah. Uh, so it's about three and a half hours. Uh, you know, I mean, you can get through it in a night. Essentially, yeah. um, I don't know if I'd recommend that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, oh baby, I had weird dreams. Weird effing dreams. <laughs> but I will say, uh, the woman that plays Martha, his stalker, Jennifer Gunning, mm-hmm. is so brilliant. If she oh does not God. win awards for this, it is a crime. It, it is one. It is such an unsettling performance. She is fearless in this performance, oh and it. Her kind, sweet face belies the <laughs> the insanity, the insanity <laughs> yeah. with her, and it's 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 unlike any stalker thing you've ever seen because it is so well rounded. Yeah, yeah it's so you, many layers, and you yeah. see both sides. Talk about it, peeling an onion, baby. Oh yeah, and oh, yeah. and it, and again, you know, it, not a lot of times. Unless it's like, oh, I slept with her and now she's talking to me. Oh, that's my culpability. Yeah. You don't see somebody admit the culpability that they have in the stalker situation. Right. And it's not like he really led her on too much. And it's not like he no, had I mean, sex with her. And it's not no, like. No, he was, he was nice to her. And, and that was but part of that. And he felt kind of sad for her. Yeah. So, felt sorry for her. Yeah. But for some people, that's enough. Yeah. You know, it's like. It hit something in me. Yeah. And it made me remember stuff or relive stuff that I've been through that right. made me really uncomfortable. Yeah. And that to me is the is an amazing thing uh that a piece of art can do, which yes. it, where it can make you feel uncomfortable but you still want to watch it. It can dredge up feelings of your own inadequacies of your, of your own uh cringe moments. Yes. You know, yes. of things that you've done and and I think that I think it just kind of swirled up a bunch of crap in my head, <laughs> and and then I went to sleep, and my brain was like, "We're yep. working some stuff out, buddy. <laughs> it ain't gonna be fun." But it, I, it's it's just done. It was written so well. Oh I, my god! There were times where I identified with both the characters. Yes, because I there was when I was younger, man. I was very much more like Martha. Sure. Where it was just like I can't really talk to you, but everything you say is confirmation that that obviously we should be together yeah and and it's and uh, unfortunately uh. being nice to people sometimes that have yeah this this is what's so sad is that there are people that if you just give them a little bit of kindness because they've never had yeah, it yeah they've been so bereft of kindness their entire they life they don't know how to process it and then they see it as then they become delusional about something that right. isn't there. They become obsessive. Yeah. It's like they need that all the time. Right. Yeah. But it's like, you know, her character, and this isn't really spoiling anything, but she has a past about being a stock. Well, that's, that's the, to me was the most messed up part is that very early on in the yes. show, he finds out that she has a past at this and he's like, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oh dude, yes. what are you doing? And that's what's brilliant about it yeah. is because you don't think, that somebody being stalked is like, well, maybe I can use that fame of her right. to help me. Right. Right. You know, it's scummy, but it's it's not something that any that other that you everybody would think about it. Right. You know. Right. You would consider not it. act yeah. on it, but we right. all have these 
dark thoughts. We all have these uh, dark instances where none of us are perfect. None of us right. are, are, you know, maybe some of us are. I definitely am not. But we definitely have moments when we make bad decisions for bad reasons. Yeah. And and then we're like, well, why did this turn out so bad? When we knew from the beginning it yeah, would. it was going to be bad, man. You know, yeah. especially when you're younger and your libido is a lot more on fire and, right. and you right. make choices that you know you shouldn't make, but you're making them with your lowers and not your uppers. Right. And right. Uh, we've, you know, a lot of us have been there. And it's just this, this is just one, if not the most captivating and interesting stalker story I've ever seen. Yeah, I agree. Highly recommend it. Uh, it's it's done very, very well. It's very good. Yes. Very good character work. Watch it. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Highly recommend it. What you playing? Um, I finally have been playing Dead Island 2. Nice. It's um, just you and I back and forth in the I know, same game. I know. For the next 20 years. I There's so many things that I, I'm like, I am going to start. I think, uh, I don't think I've got that much more in Dead Island 2. I, yeah. Because it's not a long story. No. Uh, but I think I am going to try to play Fallout 4 as soon as it, it gets the PS5 upgrade. Oh, very cool. Because I've never played it. I've never played any of the Fallout games. I have a weird thing with Bethesda and how they do their RPGs. Oh, yeah. Like, But I want to get past that. I've played a little bit of Skyrim, so I'm like, okay. But I really like the show, so I'm going to try to get past that. And I love the concept. It's I mean, great, concept, and I yeah. think it'll be better. Look, Bethesda's games are janky and weird. I know, and, I know. And, they, and, and look, they've been using the same crap engine forever. <laughs> they use the same so crap bad. engine for Starfield. Which I is know. why people, you know, why it has eight hours of loading times and stuff. <laughs> right, it's like right. move on to engine, real engine five, people. It's not hard. Nobody it's likes not your hard. engine. Nobody likes no, your yeah, engine. It's not good. It's not, not good. even you. You're, it's just you know they. I guess they just want the proprietary. You know, they yeah. don't have to license anything or whatever. They have their own in-house engine, but baby, that engine is old and it needs to be replaced. <laughs> Uh, but I did it all in two is very fun. It's very pretty. Uh, I am I am very much uh, uh, excited about running around. Like I'm in Santa Monica and Venice right now. Yeah. So like it's very fun to run around that stuff and kill zombies. And I literally yesterday went like I just I was I was in a mall and I'm like killing zombies and I was like okay like eventually they'll stop. No, they just keep coming. <laughs> they just keep coming. I spent like four hours, not four hours, like an hour, like just going through and like just killing, 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 and then finally I was like I I need to go somewhere to fix my weapons because <laughs> like this isn't gonna work anymore. But yeah. it was just nonstop. But it was fun and the gore in that game is incredible. Yes, I, it is rendered so well. Yeah, the the anatomy system they have on that. Uh, and haven't watching like hitting somebody in the face and then watching their jaw j- dangling by like one little tendon yeah. as they try to attack you is so messed up and so amazing. Or shooting them with the caustic substance and watching them melt. melt. Into yeah, you. a lot of melting. Great gore, really great gore. And you know, as a zombie games for the most part are just goof. You know, they're yeah. Uh, yeah. Last of Us. I wouldn't call it a zombie game. I would call no. it a, no, no, no. an adventure game. You know, it was yeah. like. But zombie games are supposed to be fun and goofy and dumb. You don't need a riveting story. You need – it's supposed to be like a B-movie. Yeah, it's fun. It's just fun. I, and that's – Dead Island 2 is definitely that. Yeah. It's just a, a silly – like the writing's not great. Nope. Uh, the voice acting's pretty good. Yeah. Like they've done a pretty good job with that. The graphics look amazing. But it's not – it's just you running from place to place helping people – and fighting zombies. And not a it. lot of difference. There, it, no. From beginning to end, there's no. not a lot of difference. The I, weapons the, change. The but. best is that being able to customize weapons is really the best. Every time I find something that's a little different or new, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> like this will be interesting to see how it kills people. Well, it was also interesting, too, because you only can keep a certain amount of weapons yeah. in your inventory. and. You know, you, balancing out a, a caustic one with a fire one. Right. And you need to have a, the a electrical, electrical one. one. And they all serve a different purpose. And you can Rube Goldberg a whole bunch of crap together. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a very fun diversion, you know. Yeah. It's like it'll yeah. take you a few days to play, you know, maybe a week yeah. or yeah. two if you're, you know, giving it a couple hours. 
And yeah, I'm just, I'm glad you're playing it. I'm glad you like it. It's fun. It's fun. Um, I did download, I bought and downloaded uh, this game, Harold Halibut. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I have not had a chance to play yet. It was a very large game. took a while to download. But it came out on my birthday. Yeah. And I was like, it was on sale. And I was like, okay. I told my, them to do that. My birthday present to myself, yeah. I called but the publishers. It's weird. I, look, find the trailer. Yeah. And, and look at it. It's essentially, it's like stop motion puppets. Oh, it is. But, but... Like, digitized. Well, what they did was they created every puppet. They created every set. Yeah. Just like they were going to make a stop motion film. Right. And then they digitized all the assets. Right. So everything is handmade. Yes. Yes. It took them 12 years, I think, to yeah. make the game. Yeah. Uh, but the story looks so good about oh this my God. underwater city. and But it's very similar. Like, something has happened above ground and they're or above, you know, above the water and they're down there. Very similar to Silo and Fallout. Yeah. But, like, you know, they're, it's a society kind of and going through. It looks really interesting. I'm very excited to play through it. It's like if Wes Anderson made a video game, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's got that like vibe. He did, yeah. Yeah. It definitely feel, feels like that. Yeah. You know, everything. Thing seems very handmade, and it's sh- it, the detail from you know what I've seen. I've seen a f- couple of behind the scenes videos and, and the trailers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it just looks like one of the most unique gaming experiences I've ever yes, seen. Yes, I, I'm all about interesting art design in video games and indie. We're we, and, we yeah we're very supportive of the indie game community, and each of us tries to purchase at least one indie a month. Yeah, you know, yeah. even if it's two bucks or a buck, you can get a lot of good stuff for nothing. Yeah. Um, I did also download the uh, Contra anniversary, 30th anniversary, or 40th anniversary. I don't know what it is, but Same. it's got like 15 of the Contra games on it. Oh, my God. And, man, they're still just as hard as they were 30, oh, 40 years ago. That's the thing. We were talking about this because I got it, too. It was on sale for like three bucks or something. Yeah. And uh, Contra was my jam as yeah. a kid. Yeah. Not a kid. I don't know. I was probably in college or high school when it came out. Um, but... I just remember hours and hours and hours playing that with friends, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, it, it just brought back so many memories when I started playing it. But what I've noticed with this, and like uh, I got super SNS Star Wars, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you know, for a couple of bucks a while ago, and uh, you know, a, a couple of other they're playing the 50th anniversary the Atari, Atari thing. thing. Yeah, games were so much harder, so much harder. So I can't believe I even got through them. I know, I know. I it just it's like I just don't understand. I'm sitting there like maybe this is me getting older, not having the patience anymore. Yeah. But I was just like, why would I have sat here for hours playing through this? It's insane. Yeah, it's insane how how. Because, you know, games were much simpler back then, but there was a definite skill oh, yeah. set needed yeah. to be able to get through this. And Contra was very was tough, tough hard, man. It was a hard, hard game. And and if your buddy effed up, then he <sighs> cost you a so lot. He shared your lives. And then it'd be, the worst was, like, you have to jump up. You have to go vertical, right? Yeah. And if you get left behind, if you're not keeping up with your friend, yeah. then you'll you die. die. So it's either your a-hole buddy who's not waiting for you. So you're like, dude, dude, wait up, wait up, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah. Or it's your buddy who's not keeping up, and you're like, dude, dude, come on, keep up, dude. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so it lost a lot of friendships over content. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it was so much fun playing. But, again, like, it's it's, it's hard. The game. Hey, you kids don't know how easy you had it. Ah, video games. Yeah, you never got extra lives. You couldn't save. If you didn't well, finish it on the, the first try, you couldn't. You had to the, play it again. The Konami code still does work on this. No, thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but it's just it's it's, it's fun though. Yeah. It, it's definitely fun to go back do that kind of retro stuff. It's, oh yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's you know it's again just nostalgia city. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't have. I, I, it's hard for me to. To uh, to play those for too long because I just feel like such a fool, such a loser. It's just, <laughs> but there was a lot of the stuff on there like that apparently was from the same kind of franchise. Yeah, because there was a couple of games that were not Contra games that right. were included, and I did play through. I played a couple of them, and they're interesting. Yeah. So like, I'm curious to go through and and play through because I never played any of the arcade stuff. I just played the Nintendo. Version. Oh yeah, it was arcade is where I started. Yeah, but uh, anyway, what else have you been playing? Uh, well. <laughs> um, I tried one of the new PS Plus games, uh, Essential, uh, for the PlayStation was uh, Immortals of Avium. Avium. That's Avium. What it is. I think it's Avium. I can never say it right. Uh, <laughs> or Avenum, as it says. I, is it I, Avenum or Avium? No, that's why I'm looking. <laughs> no, it's Avium. Avium. Immortals of Avium. Um, I played about, you know, half hour, hour. Um, it's interesting. It's, it's uh, the, the lead 
in it. He's great. He was in Never Have I Ever. He was one of the leads in that show. He had a small part in Roadhouse where he he uh, he, oh, he hits he the... Dalton and like hurts his hand. Oh yeah, he's the the <laughs> kind of weird little sidekick yeah. that I wish there was more of. Yeah. yeah. No, he's like a henchman. No, no, I know, but he yeah. eventually kind of becomes his sidekick in the, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Does he? Yeah, I yeah. So don't remember that yeah. movie. I blocked it all out. Um, <laughs> ah. But he's he's a great actor. He's interesting, and it's it's it just seems like a Bruckheimer movie or oh yeah, a, you know, it's, like a it's, kind of a big big budget, big budget pretty, like, yeah. you know, it's got it's an interesting first person shooter that has no guns. It's all magic, so it's kind of a Bioshocky, uh, you know, instead of a shotgun, you have like a blast of. Fruit bars. I don't know. It, I haven't gotten that far, but uh, <laughs> fruit bars. It seems interesting. Our friend Tucker uh, got it when it came out. Oh, really? I remember him talking about it and enjoying it. Uh, so it's a very pretty game. It seems like it could be fun. I will give it more of a. a yeah, I do, I'm I, eventually I'm gonna download it and play it because yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. It seems like it'll be fine. I also tried another one was Skull S K U L. It's kind of a old timey platformer, mm-hmm. you know, roguelike, I guess, uh, which is fine. It was fun playing a little bit. It's just those games get very difficult very fast. Yeah, for me, so it's hard for me to kind of right. Keep yeah, going. same. It's like contra. Exactly. <laughs> it just gets to the point where I'm like, what am I doing? Why do I make myself feel so horrible about myself? Yeah. There is a game that came out this week, uh, PlayStation exclusive, called Stellar Blade. Yeah. And there was a demo. So I tried the demo because I want to kind of, you know, give you guys sure. tips on stuff that isn't 14 years old. Oh, right, right. Uh, <laughs> it's it's solid. Solid action game. It's very, like, Devil May Cry. Yeah. You know, the combat is is solid. The graphics are really good. I don't I have no idea what the story is. <laughs> Something about going to a planet and whatever. Everybody dies but you. Oh. And, somebody, but, and somebody else. I don't know. A lot of Spoilers. people died in the beginning. This is the first <laughs> It's very capable, fine game. I just it, it maybe if it comes down to like 10, 20 bucks yeah. or something, but there's nothing wrong with it. It just I don't know. It the, just seems like those that style bad. of game just don't really do anything for me. Yeah, it's I I love Devil May Cry back in the day. Like I loved those kind of over the top action, yeah, fast fighting gun shooting sword right. slashing sword slashing you know the enemies are cool and everything again you know it's just it's i'm i'm also not a fan of like the scantily clad big buxom jiggly yeah uh protagonist it just seems a little oh is she the protagonist yes oh and yeah i guess you can get costumes to cover up a little more or you know less less mm-hmm. uh it's very pervy um <laughs> it makes you feel a little pervy uh but it's it's like Bayonetta or yeah, Devil yeah. May Cry. It's got that kind of vibe to it. And again, solid gameplay. It's just mm, didn't grab me. Yeah, didn't yeah. grab me. And yeah. again, most mostly playing <laughs> the old man that I am. Yeah, is uh, still plugging along on Red Dead Redemption Two on my third playthrough. It's so funny. I played through it. I played through it again. And now on my third playthrough, I'm playing. I'm, I'm paying a lot more attention to the story and mm-hmm. stuff that's going on. I, I, it is hands down the greatest game ever. Hands down the greatest story told. I think. Yeah, yeah. Hands down the most complicated and interesting protagonist of any game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Arthur Morgan is so, and and especially if you play him, uh, bad honor and good honor. It yeah. just it changes so much. It's it's it, you shape the world around how people perceive you. It's just so interesting, and I'm just there's. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that hasn't played it, even though it's like half a decade old at sure, this point. Sure, but you know things happen to Arthur that are bad, and I'm just finding it like knowing what happens. I'm just dreading right stuff, and I'm putting off things that I know because I don't want to get to that point. Right, right. Because it's so sad. Uh, but I, but again, like. It's I, I cannot emphasize how much I connect with this video game. I think more than I've ever connected with any other video game, even the first one, which I thought was great. Yeah. But it's yeah. just there's something about it that speaks to me in a way that no other game ever has. Wow. Well, 
And uh, and I think it's going to be like a yearly playthrough thing for me. Nice. You know, at least until the third one comes out in 2060. So you'll literally be playing it essentially for half a year every year <laughs> yeah, well, for the yeah, rest of your exactly. life. Exactly. But the thing <laughs> is, I'm still finding stuff I've never found before. Yeah, yeah. In my third playthrough, I'm still stumbling upon stuff that I've never seen. Or even from making a different choice, yeah. you know, stuff that I've never uh, uh, experienced before. So, again, it's just one of those games that the replayability and the, the longevity of it is, right. is, you know, it's insane. But, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's it. All right. Well, we should probably wrap it up. We've been going real long. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. So I guess our our movie, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, our big movie uh, recommendation for the month is Little Women. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was the best movie I watched this year uh, or this year, this, this, year. This, this month. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I think uh, maybe Lisa Frankenstein. Yeah. Lisa for new stuff. Lisa Frankenstein's worth a watch it's interesting enough yeah uh, for tv for me uh it, it would be i think that the number one would have to be baby reindeer yeah yeah you should watch it and it is it's short enough that you can watch it uh fairly quickly yeah but uh but highly highly spread it out over a couple of days you should yeah. because it is definitely some some very deep deep uh feelings oh my that, god that, and, that, and just you know. be warned there's sexual assault there's a lot of yeah uh, triggering things, I guess. If, very, if, very, know. very. Yes. But they they do a good job of kind of warning you of that. Yeah. Uh, before the episodes, and then uh, uh, Fallout and and Conan O'Brien must go. Conan O'Brien must go. Watch it just for the joy, just to get get yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. throw that on. If you're in a bad mood, it'll. I guarantee you, it'll make you smile. It'll make you laugh. It is. It's just. It's a. It's a great antidote to today's awfulness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why I started watching The Amazing Race. Yeah, I feel the same way about The Amazing Race. Yeah. You, you, look, we need good stuff in our lives. Yeah. We need a nourishing uh, content that's going to enrich us rather than enrage us. Everybody feed Phil is very much that way too. It's very joyful, I'm and I, I, it's really good. I, I highly recommend it. Good travel show, but very focused on food, but uh, but also very joyful. Nice. Yeah. Well, look, we're going to be starting up a new month next month. Yeah. Uh, it's our a classic Connery month. With Sean Connery. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun month. I'm excited. There's a lot of movies uh, that I've not seen in a long, long time. Oh, it's always a crapshoot. Yeah. You know, I always get nervous. There's actually a couple I've not seen at all. So, yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing is I always get a little nervous when I there's something that I recommend that I loved as a kid that you <laughs> haven't seen. Like, I'm, I'm really nervous about uh, um, Outland. Uh, I I think Outland's going to be good, but maybe that's me setting expectations for it. So we're starting with The Great Train Robbery. The Great Train Robbery. Uh, in 19, 1978. Outlast is 1981. Uh, the Name of the Rose. Uh, all, all technically period pieces. Yeah. <laughs> um, and ah, then I'm a and monk. I, I want to say I think that was 84 or 83. Something like that. And then uh, The Untouchables, which was 87. Technically, they're all period pieces. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, uh, just one of them is a in the future period piece. Put one of the ash in the morgue. I am very excited about it. Uh, I've gl- seen it so long. I, 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 all of them, even the Great Train Robbery, which I is th- probably the least that I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, but it's based on true story, and it's Michael Crichton. Yeah. So it's like I, and he's fascinating. I loved his books. I because they're just is, such simple, easy to read. He has the career that I, and we'll talk about this more next week. Yeah. But he has the career that I wish. I'd had. Yeah. Because he didn't just do books. No. Like, he was also into movies very early Directed on. And film. Like, yeah. Di- very like, he well just rounded. was very good. And also, he is apparently was a giant. I didn't know this. Yeah, he was huge. He was huge. That's why he died. He was too big to <laughs> he live. He was too big to live. Yeah. But anyway, Great Train Robbery will be great. I'm excited about Outland. It is it's it is a, a future Western. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm uh, really excited to see it again. I'm also nervous because, I, I, yeah. you know... It, I don't want to be. I want to be Tango and Cashed. I don't want to be Harley <laughs> Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Uh, <laughs> all of them. It's going to be good. The name of the rose, even because it's a murder mystery, but set in like the 13th century. Like it's. I love all these movies. It's. I am very excited. It's going to be good. I love Sean Connery. I am excited to jump back into him. So charming. And, so uh, handsome. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about Sean Connery that you may not have known. Uh, uh, sometimes your wife needs a smack oh, to keep her in line. 
So, sometimes they just ask What's for that, it. Sean? Yeah. yeah. I'm old school. Yeah. He's, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you we'll definitely, have a strong definitely be talking about that in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's get yeah. out. Let's, maybe we'll get all the bad stuff about him out of the way in the I, first I mean, one. honestly, it kind of is. So yeah. I, I, He was a bit of a crank and a grump when he got older, but oh my God. The guy was a, uh, he got, the guy was a coffin maker that turned into one of the biggest stars in the world. Yeah. Anyway. All right. We'll be back next week. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Come on, members. Go. It feel. It feel. <laughs> it definitely feel. It feel like a boo. <laughs> it felt the whole kind of cyberpunk aesthetic, which was kind of just. Are you mean steampunk? Did I say cyberpunk? You did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't that. <laughs> We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming, Dallas, already in progress.